Minister, I have to start with some comments that you made back in February. Uh, you said that the Federal Reserve was sleeping at the wheel on inflation, and you called it right. They've been raising interest rates aggressively since then. Are you at all concerned that we could see a U.S. recession really taking down the world economy and Brazil with it? Well, I think really this uh, threat of uh, a synchronized deceleration in the world economy was already very clear to us because we had two adverse supply shocks very severe first the covid 19 disruption in global value chains and then you had the war in ukraine hitting food and energy and these are adverse supply shocks that like they call for stagflation they signal stagflation a very hard very tough environment ahead and also the end of global labor arbitrage something that kept inflation uh, under control for 10, 20, 25 years. If you go and read Alan Greenspan, uh, the age of uh, turbulence, he was talking about that, how in the mid-20s, uh, this uh, threat of stagflation mm. uh, hit uh, the Western economy. I think it began. Uh, and But Brazil is out of sync. Brazil is at the beginning of a long cycle. Uh, we revised our growth forecast from minus one and a half to plus two percent. Inflation, we re revising it downwards from. Let me ask you about inflation because you're still expecting big spending to come from the government. Would that exacerbate price pressures? No, it's entirely. It's uh, Brazil is probably one of the few economies in the world that is uh, with fiscal balance. So we. Uh, went through these pandemics and now the war on Ukraine uh, with a commitment to fiscal balance. So Brazil has a surplus, a fiscal surplus, primary surplus. Uh, and we had a budget of 10, uh, we had a deficit of 10% last year. And it moved to zero this year because all our expenditures were temporary, uh, help uh, direct income transfers to poor people. So we budgeted that help uh, and we remove the stimulus, the fiscal stimulus during the, the, the rebound of the... Which is all great news for the economy, but I wonder if, because we're talking about the public spending cap again and that being changed, as you acknowledge, potentially next year, will it spook investors? Will it really take the real even lower against the U.S. dollar, making inflation even worse? What sort of changes are you expecting, are you expecting for that spending cap? Well, listen. Uh, Brazil, because growth is accelerating and inflation is going down and we are generating, uh, the unemployment rate was 15% one year ago. Now it's 9% and going down. We are generating 600, 700,000 jobs, 300 former jobs, 500 informal jobs every month. We created 14 million new jobs uh, in the last two years. So Brazil is really out of sync with the global economy. We have a internal growth dynamics. We have, like I told you last time, when I told you that everything that is going on now, I told you six months ago, I told you, listen, you keep me here. Uh, you were concerned about Brazil, and I told you, Cherry, mm -hmm. take care of the U.S., because we are take care of ourselves. We're, so uh, what is going on in Brazil now is we are at the beginning of a long cycle. We have $200 billion. It's two Marshall plans of investment commitments uh, for the next 10 years on 5G, telecommunications, uh, cabotage, railroads, airports. We are privatizing. We just privatized the largest renewable energy company in Latin America. Privatized it one month ago. So uh, I'm really very concerned about the global economy and not that much concerned about our economy. Mm -hmm. We, we call a growth dynamics. I told you that six months ago, and it is happening. Right. But, Minister, you, can, you continue to cite, and rightfully so, the fact that national debt is coming down, that there is buffers within the national budget to be able to spend more. But isn't the problem convincing that credibly within financial markets? Sherry mentioned the worries about a, a potentially weaker currency. Is it a concern to you that you need to be able to sell this confidence to global financial mm -hmm. markets at a time when we are seeing global liquidity concerns and, 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 and just, you know, the, overall recession and rate rise concerns? The Brazilian currency was one of the most 
uh, one of that raised most against uh, the rest of the world this year. Uh, so we lost something against the dollar as you began raising interest rates, but we are recovering that already. Uh, we dropped the one percent from the beginning of the year against the dollar to today. Most currencies, the euro, all other currencies went down sharply. So we will be resisting uh, this very, very. Uh, I think I, I'm really very comfortable with the the forecast for the Brazilian economy because they are confirming our expectations at the beginning of the year. It was a change from minus one and a half to plus two percent, so three and a half percent. And the U.S. the forecasts were four, four and a half. And I told Cherry, "Listen, you're going to rebuild that downwards all the time." And now we are seeing negative, negative rates. So I'm uh, really, I think this is a problem that will stay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the problem will stay for a long time. Uh, I think I reaffirm. I reaffirm, I reaffirm mm. that the central banks of the advanced economies are way behind the curve, way behind the curve. So you got used it for 10, 15, 20 years uh, with the well, trade from China, putting inflation right. down the world. Yeah, and, but that, that's sort of what then, Sherry started this conversation then, with, right, Minister, that there is a massive risk now of increasing risk of a US and potentially global recession. That would cause a collapse when it comes to commodities prices. Have you factored in much lower com commodities prices into your forecast? Because that would be a pretty major catalyst for the central bank as well as the economy to have to push for easier monetary and fiscal policy. Unfortunately, because inflation will stay longer than you think, commodity prices will not go down. They will just stop going up for a while. Uh, but I think uh, that Brazil has a very diverse, uh, diversified economy. Uh, we are reindustrializing the country. We are removing taxes. Uh, remember Reagan when he reduced the tax and then the U.S. began uh, reindustrializing itself against the threat of Japan. At that time, Japan was the threat. It was not China. Uh, so we are reducing taxes in Brazil. Uh, we are reindustrializing the country. Uh, we are. Uh, we have the cleanest energy matrix in the world. Uh, Danish companies, German companies, Spanish companies, European companies in general are mm. coming to Brazil to exploit eolic wind. Uh, solar energy. Uh, Minister Gaddis, let me just go back to the spending cap because you haven't told us if you're willing to change it yes. or what changes you're Let's expecting talk to about see next year. Cap. Yeah, we have Let's, to. This is uh, the one question that our investors really want to know about. Yes, let's talk about the spending cap. The spending cap was uh, produced exactly to control the increase of the government. We are moving from a state driven economy to a market driven economy. So, when the COVID hit Brazil, we had to protect 68 million vulnerables. We had to preserve 11 million jobs, new jobs that we preserved. And we created another 14 million jobs. Right. So, temporarily, temporarily, we went through the ceiling. But in one year, we had we were spending 26.5% of GDP. We this are was last year.